Dark with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is the question, and here's one that the happy people have to say. Okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And you do, 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 and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! The fort was less than a mile outside of town, and Todd Cantrell decided to leave his horse at the livery stable. Todd walked out to the fort, and as soon as he had sketched his war record, the adjutant accepted his enlistment. The first sergeant showed him a barracks where he would sleep. And it was there that Todd saw his first familiar face. And... Hey, by thunder, it's Todd. Todd Cantrell. How are you, boy? Hello, Reed. What are you doing here? What does it look like? Back in the army. Yeah, but why? I thought you were heading straight for your old Kentucky home and that you were never going to leave the place again. My home had been burnt to the ground. Oh, during the war? No. Happened after the war was over. A band of outlaws. What about your family? It was only my sister. They killed her. Oh. I'm sorry, Tom. Most of the crooks were caught. It was only their leader who got away. I decided to find them. I've been looking for over a year. Ever hear of anybody called Ace Hudman? No, I haven't. He may not be using his right name. He's big, weighs close to 200. Scar on his cheek. Todd, when was it he enlisted? Three months ago. Uh-huh. Any ideas? No. Yes, you have. What do you think? Well, in a general way, Hawks answers the description. And it was about three months ago that he did... What are you going to do? Take a look through this duffel. The letters. Jewelry. He might still have some that he stole. Jewelry? What kind? Different things. I remember a ring my father used to wear. A coiled serpent with emeralds for the eyes. A diamond brooch that belonged to my mother. Pearl. God. You may not find anything in there. No, you're right. But the ring. He wears the ring. You mean it? A snake. Green stone. Thanks. What are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll think about it. The other men returned to the barracks. But the man who called himself Hawks wasn't among them. The troopers retired for the night. The lamps were turned out, and then, as taps were sounding, the door of the barracks opened and the sergeant came in. He raised a lantern high above Hawk's empty cot. Where is he? Don't know, Sarge. Haven't seen him. Search me. I guess the doc was right. What do you mean? 
Well, we saw him heading out of town tonight wearing civilian clothes. The men discussed the news for a few minutes, but Todd said nothing. He waited until the barracks were silent and all the troops seemed to be sleeping. Then he threw aside his blanket and began to dress in the clothes he had worn when he came to the fort. Shortly after midnight, Todd rode into the little town of Greenville that nestled in the foothills about 20 miles west of the fort. Hold, hold it. He dismounted in front of the only cafe, tied his mount to the hitch rack, and walked inside. He searched the line of men at the bar, and then started for one of them at the far end, a man who wore blue trousers with his buckskin shirt. It was a ring on his finger that had caught Todd's eye. You call yourself Hawks, don't you? What's that? It used to be Hudlin, didn't it? I don't know what you're talking about, mister. My name is Cantrell. That should be all the explanation you need. Where are you from? From Kentucky. Oh, that's all right, then. I was afraid for a minute you were from the Ford. I am. You're not in uniform? No. When I heard that you deserted, I came after you. I don't get it. I never saw you before in my life. I didn't enlist until this afternoon. I joined up because they told me you were in the tent. Because I was. What have I got to do with you? You killed my sister. Why, you're local. Back in Kentucky. I've never been in Kentucky. And where'd you get that ring? Oh, so that's it. Hudlin's the man you're after. You're Hudlin. I am not. My name is Hawks. I won this ring from Hudlin in a poker game. That was in Kansas City. Man, listen to me! Everyone in the cafe turned toward the door. The sheriff was standing there, and directly behind him were a masked man and an Indian. Look, a masked man. An outlaw, an Indian, too. This man is an outlaw. He's a friend of mine. You can forget about the mask. He rides a white horse called Silver. This Indian's name is Tonto. You need any more of an introduction? The Lone Ranger. Yes, the Lone Ranger. Now, go on, mister. Tell them what you told me. There's a raiding party. About 50 Apaches heading this way. If you want to save your town, get your rifles and plenty of ammunition and follow me. The Lone Ranger directed the defense of the town. He posted most of the men at the western end, closest to the hills, the most logical place for the attack. If the Indians chose to circle the town, there would be time to change their position. Todd, who had borrowed a rifle and ammunition, took his place close to the masked man. As he did so, a single horseman on a buckskin bronc raced up the dry creek bed, away from the town and into the hills. Who was that? I know. He calls himself Hulk. He's a deserter from the tent. A deserter? As a matter of fact, so am I. But the only reason I deserted was to follow him. What is he, a renegade? He's worse than that. Uh, there's no one worse than the man who turns against his own people. Well, I'm sure now that his name is Ace Hudlin. Wanted for murder in King Tuck. Maybe him go warn Apache town ready to fight. Could be, Toto. That's uh, there are only 50 Indians. They were depending on surprise. Nothing happens within the next few minutes. We'll know they've been warned. The minutes stretched out. Five, then ten. The Lone Ranger and the Sheriff held a conference. They could be just holding off, waiting until later. Hoping we'll all go to bed. Toto and I'll find out, Sheriff. How? Right into the hills. Danger. There's a moon. Tunnel can read the sign. It's easy to tell if them turn round right back to camp. Look. What? Indians at the top of that rise. But they're out of range. They're not coming any closer. There's Hudlin with them. That proves he's a renegade. Them right way now. Mr. May, I'll ride with you. Oh, what for? I have a personal statement. Hudlin is wanted for the murder of my sister. And if you do find the encampment, I can take a word back to the fort. We can use your help. The colonel doesn't know me. So, uh, what's your name? Todd Cantrell. All right, get mounted, Todd. We'll start right away. And so the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Todd rode into the tangled hills. The Indian ponies, unshod for the most part, left faint traces in the hard ground. But Toto found other signs. And by noon of the following day, the trail had led them to the opening of Glory Pass. There they drew rain. Oh, 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 oh. Right through here came a covey. 
It's not good to follow him through pass. Too many chances for ambush, you mean. And that's right. Glory pass, not good. But cover no trail over ridge, down to Buffalo Basin on the other side. If Raiden Party go all the way through pass, across Basin, he pick up trail on the other side ridge. It's a good idea. Lead the way. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up. Just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. As the Lone Ranger, Toto and Todd Cantrell watched the Indian encampment from the top of the ridge. They made an accurate account of the renegades. When they had finished... Nearly a thousand. I'd better get started for the fort. Do you think you'll have any trouble? Getting there, no. After you get there, you said you were a deserter. I figure the colonel will call it absent without leave when I give him this information. There's only one thing. What's that? I haven't seen a hut down there. Mm-hmm. Neither have I. But I can forget my personal problems for a while. When it comes to war, one has to. Yeah, I'll be a good soldier, mister. Well, what about you and Tonto? Will you stay here? Yes. It'll be dark before you reach the fort. It'll be another six hours before the troops can reach here, even if they started right away. There's no telling what little dog will do in the next 12 hours. We'll keep an eye on him. The army couldn't have better scouts. Adios. Adios, and good luck. What neither the Lone Ranger nor Todd could know was that Ace Hudlin had left the raiding party as they rode toward Buffalo Basin and had made a wide circle of Greenville through the hills. At six o'clock that evening, he rode into the fort. It was at eleven o'clock that night that the Lone Ranger and Toto drew rain in the shadow of the stockade. Oh, it sounds as if the regiment's getting ready to move. Ah, Soldiers see your mask. Them not let you through gate. And there are other ways of getting inside. I'm going over the wall. Standing in his saddle, the Lone Ranger jumped for the top of the stockade. He pulled himself up and then dropped to the ground on the other side. He crouched low in the shadows to get his bearings. His destination was the colonel's quarters, but the building closest to him was the guardhouse. A lantern shone through one of the barred windows, and he saw Todd Cantrell. The Lone Ranger pulled his hat low over his eyes and sprinted across the open space between the stockade and the guardhouse. Nice, man. What are you doing in there? I'm under arrest. The colonel didn't believe your report. Hudlin got back here before I did. He told the colonel he saw me in Little Dog's King. I see. But he told the truth about where the camp is. I can't understand it. He told the truth about where the camp was. In Buffalo Basin. No longer there, Todd. Why? Just about dusk, all of the Apaches began moving out of the basin and into the pass. The regiment tried to go through there, they'll be massacred. But that's what they intend to do. A forced march through the pass to catch the Apaches in the basin at dawn. You're sure? A friend of mine, Red Colby, told me. He got it from Captain Walsh. It'll be suicide. And yeah, the colonel must be warned. Who's going to do that? 
he won't listen to me. I'll have to make him listen. Where are his living quarters? At the far end of the parade ground, next to the orderly room. All right, I'll see you later. The Lone Ranger circled the stockade, keeping close to the adobe walls until he reached the rear of the colonel's quarters. They were dark. He tried a window. It was unlocked. He opened it and climbed inside. No sooner had his feet touched the floor than he heard the colonel's voice just outside the door that opened on the parade ground. You'll sound assembly in exactly 15 minutes, Silver. Yes, sir. Quickly, the Lone Ranger circled the room. The colonel opened the door and left it ajar as he started for the table to light the lamp. The Lone Ranger stepped between the colonel and the door and closed it. What the... Who's there? Keep your voice down, Colonel. You're covered. Who are you? I'll explain that later. What's the meaning of this? You just walked into a trap. The same sort of a trap that's waiting for you at Gory Pass. I'm calling the guard. All right, go ahead. Go ahead with your plans. Your regiment will be wiped out. I have positive information that Little Dog is camped in Buffalo Basin. The only way to reach there is through the pass. Your information isn't up to date. Will you listen to me? I... Something about your voice. Yes. I'll listen. Five minutes later, all the troop commanders were summoned to the colonel's quarters. There's been a change in marching orders, men. Only Troop C under Captain Walsh will ride straight from Glory Pass. All of the troops will remain under my command, and our route will be across the river. will be the most difficult assignment, Captain Walsh. But you'll have the assistance of a scout who'll meet you on the trail. A civilian scout, sir? The best there is in the West. You may have heard of him. The Lone Ranger. Oh, yes, of course. I followed his suggestions in changing our plan of attack. I should give you every confidence in its ultimate success. It certainly does, sir. There's only one thing more. Captain Walsh? Yes, sir. Return Private Cantrell to duty. Arrest Private Hawks. Put him in irons and lock him in the guardhouse. Yes, sir. Troop C, with Captain Walsh and the Lone Ranger riding at the head of the column, reached Glory Pass just before dawn. There they waited for the first light and rested their horses. The captain questioned the masked man. You're sure the colonel and the others will have enough time to reach their position? Yes, Tonto knows every inch of the ground. Oh, he's taking our time. They should be on the other side of the ridge by now. I don't see any sign of the Apache yet. We won't until they're inside the pass. Particularly spits are granted. But the colonel picked your troop because he felt they were up to it. They all know what to expect and what to do. Every one of them. Well, it's light enough now. Ready? Yes. Troop, prepare the mount. Mount. Oh! Oh! Come on, go. Troop rode into Glory Pass. The opening of the pass was half a mile behind them when the first war whoop pierced the morning air. Instantly, the slopes were alive and hundreds of Indians were pouring down through the trees toward the trail. The troop acted as a man without any command. In a second, they had wheeled their mounts and were racing back to the entrance, shooting as they rode. Their speed was desperate. For it was only speed that could keep them out of range of the pursuing Apache guns. But they rode no farther than the opening of the pass. There they leaped from their saddles and took to any cover they could find. Trees, rocks, boulders. One part of their task was completed. They had brought the Indians into the open. Now they must hold their attack. Hold them inside the pass. The cavalry carbines shattered by Gatling guns. Still, the odds were so great against them that it would be impossible to hold the position for long. Todd Cantrell wounded, slumped to the ground, his head and shoulders exposed to enemy fire. The Lone Ranger left his own cover, and braving the hail of lead, pulled him back to safety. Todd? Yes, yes cut your scalp. Lie still. Shouldn't there... Isn't there time for the others? It's time, all right. Anything had gone wrong. We've done our part. They'll do theirs. But if they don't... You don't have to worry anymore. Here they come. 
colonel and the rest of the regiment had crossed the ridge and entered the pass from Buffalo Basin. Now they were sweeping through the pass toward the Lone Ranger and the gallant band at the eastern entrance. The Apaches were caught between two fires. At this point, the walls of the pass were too steep for their horses. Once more, they charged at the Lone Ranger and his men. Once more, they were driven back. The troopers under the colonel's command closed in from the rear, and Little Dog, caught in his own trap, cried for mercy. His renegade followers threw down their arms. The Battle of Glory Pass was part of history. The regiment bivouacked in Buffalo Basin and cared for its wounded. The colonel stopped beside Todd Cantrell. Cantrell, I've been talking with one of the men of your troop. Your friend called me. Yes, sir. Told me all about you and Ace Hudlin. You may rest assured that Hudlin will be sent back to Kentucky for trial. Yes, sir. Now, as for you, I understand that you enlisted only because you were looking for Hudlin. That was true, sir. But I've changed my mind about a lot of things during the past two days. You have? Yes, sir. And I've promised a mask for me, and I'd be a good soldier. Good. You'll get a chance to keep your promise. Thank you, sir. When you think of him, of what he's done for his country, well... I understand. Yes, sir. A man doesn't like to break a promise he's made to the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.